All right. Welcome to Friday Night Pikes. We are on location. Um, somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, on location at Scott and Lauren Jelly's hunting cabin. And yeah. this place is awesome. We drove... Yeah. They drove us back into the boonies, and I said, boy, if we get lost, we have no way to find our way back. Yeah. But yeah, here we beautiful. are. It's an awesome, beautiful little cabin and very yeah. scenic. So Yeah, it's probably one of my favorite places I've ever been. And when I envision a place, when I envision a place uh, of where I would like to live one day, it's in a cabin on a little lake. And yep, right at the Jelly's with about, cabin. With about 100-some <laughs> acres of hunting land. Yeah. So, Great. So. Thanks for taking us out here. Yeah. You're welcome. We got to see, uh, well, I'll introduce you first. Uh, um, you guys want to say who you are and okay. yeah. well, what, what you do and yeah. where are you from? I'm uh, Lauren Jelly, uh, 71 years old. Uh, lived around here uh, all my life. Uh, went to school, college, um, school in New London, and college in Wilmer. Uh, went through welding welding program and um, graduated there in about, I think it was 70 years, 71, 72, and um, worked for um, construction, boiler boiler shops and power plants and did things like that. And eventually, I, uh, they uh, needed another instructor out at the school where I uh, graduated from uh, the welding program. I applied and got it, and uh, that was in about 77, 78, 76, 77, 77, 78, right in there. And uh, I taught there for 31 years and have been uh, retired for the last, I don't know, I lose track, no, seven or eight years. <laughs> I lose track of what day it is, too. So. <laughs> Full-time spear producer now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I mess around the shop. and uh, always have. Uh, that's my... I know here just uh, over Thanksgiving, I, I had COVID. And so uh, I felt like a leper. I had to stay in the basement while everybody was upstairs <laughs> making left saw and things like that. And uh, and I sat on the couch and watched TV for about 10 days. Mm -hmm. And I am not that guy. I won't ever want to do that again. Yeah. Was, it was it rough for you? I mean, was yeah, it? Yeah, I, I just, well, the thing was, no, the COVID? Yeah. No, uh, I had the shots and... Uh, it was just like a bad cold yep. uh, that hung on a little longer than it probably should have. But uh, you felt rough enough, so I, I didn't want to, you know, when I go out in, in our shop, uh, you know, when you're, especially if both of us are in there and you're grinding and welding and mm -hmm. brazing and carrying on, and there's it just uh, atmosphere is not the cleanest. Uh, so if you got a head cold already, uh, yeah. I just want to stay out of there. <laughs> yep, so I, I sure. stayed out of there. So, yeah. Good that you made it through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, go ahead, Scott. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm Scott Jelly. I'm 33 years old. Uh, Lauren's son, as you probably assume. <laughs> um, what I do right now is I, I guess I'm I'm basically making spears right now. Um, I've done a number of different things. I've had uh, I worked in drafting for about five years. Um, then I worked at a machine shop for a few years and, uh, I was a chemical dependency counselor for a little bit mm -hmm. and, uh, then I went back, I was taking some classes in the last couple of years at St. Cloud State. So I was full-time student and, uh, fortunately, uh, a lot of people are spearing right now. Yeah, so. <laughs> the spear business uh, has been booming. Yeah, <clears throat> and so uh, I've been able to go and uh, go into Dad's shop and take up his space and uh, <laughs> and learn from the spears. master. Huh? Yeah, and absolutely, it's uh, it's I'm pr I'm pretty lucky. I really am. Um, it's it's something that I really enjoyed doing, and it's uh, you know something that you can always get better at so it doesn't really get boring yeah um, awesome yeah. yeah so that's what i'm doing right now we'll Sweet. see about the future there you go <laughs> very cool lauren when uh when did you start making spears and what was kind of the what what was the original i don't know inspiration I, to get you going i can still remember uh, uh when 
I was a little kid. <laughs> I was real little because I think mom wanted to get me uh, get me out of her hair. She had made my dad uh, take me with him spearing when he didn't want me in the spear house either. So he dropped me <laughs> off at this resort at this resort down on Norwell Lake, and I don't remember the name of the guy, um, but I could I could almost you know what you, what you remember where the place was. It was just a little little shop, and uh, and I and uh, he would babysit me. And uh, he, I remember him playing the fiddle. He had a fiddle, and the only thing he could play was turkey in the straw. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, I remember that, I don't know, but that, yeah. that's, uh, that's what I do remember. But then, uh, you know, I remember going out with my dad, um, a lot of times uh, dragging a bag of corn cobs to burn in the wood stove. Oh. And, uh, and I always, you know, I never appreciated it when I was a kid, but uh, when I was younger, but uh, anybody who's ever done any spearing, uh, if 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 you knew anybody that never missed and always hit his fish right behind the head, that was my dad. I mean, he he had a small five tine, real little five tine, a real you know blacksmith spear, but he was deadly with that thing. I remember he got there was a two week span where he got three northerns over four pounds for two weeks straight every day. So mm. in the winter time, that's that was his. Uh, Milk calls, and then he'd get out to the spear house, and yeah. we ate a lot of fish. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but he was my inspiration as far as uh, spearing. That was always fun. And uh, I got to be about, uh, I don't know, I suppose 12, 14 years old. Just thinking about this the other day, because I still have, well, when I go to church, um, my cousin um, Marlon Orson usually sits right there, and my cousin Paul Jelly sits right behind me. And us three would go out on the river in New London, and I'd bring my dad's spear, and this is over Christmas break, so we had some time off. And I'd stay at my cousin's there in New London. And, you know, I lived out on a farm uh, about nine, ten miles out of town, but uh, I get to stay there, and then we'd go out spearing, and we'd take turns spearing. We had, had that one spear, and it'd be Paul's turn, and I'd my turn in Marlin, <laughs> and we did in the river full of northerns, but we just had a heck of a good time out there. So I was, that was cool. Uh, I'm. And then I, you know, just being in metals all the time, I, I um, when I was at school, um, I don't know, I think it was after I got out of, out of welding school, but <clears throat> my, uh, I worked at a boiler shop, and this, this guy that, uh, he was an old retired uh, railroad man, um, uh, Char um, Ronnie Huff, his name was, I think it was Ronnie, anyway. Uh, he says, uh, you ever build a fish spear? I said, yeah, I think I dabbled in it once, but he says, he handed me these rods, these 36 inch well, uh, long, uh, rods. They were just a bare rod. Um, and he says, um, these make great spears. Hmm. And I said, well, what are they? And he said, they're, <clears throat> they're great Northern railroads own patented material for, uh, they used to gas weld up railroad tracks with them. So it's a high manganese steel. Manganese is a real, really, that's what rock crushers are. You know, it's just a very, very good steel. Very, very tough. And uh, these were gas welding rods. And he said the only place you can find them is down in South St. Paul in the railroad, uh, railroad warehouses, uh, leaning between the studs along the walls. Cause, yeah. uh, that's they don't make it anymore, obviously, because nobody's going to gas well up a railroad track. Yeah. Um, so, and I've still got some, but I made uh, I made a few spears out of that, and that was kind of fun and, and uh, interesting. And then I just I don't know I I just kept always wanting to try try to make them better, and I kept working at it, and pretty soon. Did you say what year this was? Yeah, I was going to say, how old were you when you figured you were you started? Oh, I was. I suppose I was. Uh, I see, that'd have been about. Uh, Probably, I was probably uh, 28. Okay. And I wouldn't say I wouldn't have made one before that, but I don't really recall that. I think uh, my middle son, uh, Nick, has my first spear that I ever made, and I don't remember where. But that was with that Oxwald MW, that material. And uh, and so that would have been after. I probably, you know, I take that back. Because um, I graduated, I'd say 73, 72, 73 is probably when I made my first. Okay. So you would have and been right been now, I have stamp number 451. Almost 50 years ago. 451. So, 451. Right? Almost 50 years ago? Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> Half a century. Yeah. yeah. 
So it uh, it's uh, it's been a long process, but uh, <laughs> it was you know I just make them for my friends, and and and, and so that yeah. and that was cool because they enjoyed it, and, and mm-hmm. I remember one guy, my oh, uh, Larry, my friend in that powder horn right there. No, <laughs> he uh, he come over because I needed. Uh, he come over and combine my I little food plot at home. When he drove up my driveway, I was food plot both sides. Okay. And uh, and I had corn in there or, or beans or something. He brought his combine over, and he, I said, well, what do I owe you? He said, I want you to make me a spear and a chisel. I said, you got it. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of stuff. I never really sold any for a long time. I just give them away. But uh, like the one I showed you in my shop, uh, that's those are the ones that uh, started it out. And I used to take torsion springs off of overhead garage doors. And uh, I could go dumpster diving at a at a, these places that uh, uh, put garage doors up, and they got a big old bin out there, and and uh, and when one of those would break, they'd replace both of them, so there'd be all mm-hmm. kinds of them in there. And I have Scott and my <laughs> wife. I had a process where we could we could uh, I had this thing clamped in the in the vise, and uh, it's a, a long beam, and I had a, a pipe on it. And I take that torsion spring and I'd slide it over there, and I got a vice grip. I clip on there, and, and I had a washer welded to the end of that vice grip. And then we put the come along on that, and then stretch that out as far out as we could. And then he'd be on one end, and I'd be heating it with a rosebud and hanging on like this here. And then he'd be jacking it out. And when he got eight feet out, we cut it off, and that was a whole spear. I mean, you got enough there for one spear, so yeah. I just kept on doing that until the whole thing's gone. And uh, that's a, you know, it's a, it's a spring steel. So I, yep. you know, I, I'm a metals guy. I know I, I want to make good stuff. So I want to start out with good material, and that was good material. Mm-hmm. Um, now we don't use that anymore. That's a, that's a lot of work and a, and a pitchfork. <laughs> yeah, that's pitch, how there is. <laughs> <laughs> pitchfork tines work so much better, which are not easy to work with either, uh, because of all the. Cleaning you got to do too. Yeah. You know. So when you're saying pitchfork tines for the people, you're you're actually finding old hay forks, silage forks. Mm. Um, I have. Uh, it's un, un, unbelievable how many people are actually looking for forks for me because they. Well, first of all, they like our spears, and they know we make make them out of that. So I get guys calling me all the time, and say, "Hey," he said I got four or five forks for you. you know? mm-hmm. Does uh, it have to be an old one, or can uh, it- you know, generally. Uh, Steel's probably a little you better. Gotta, you got to remember now, uh, people don't use forks anymore, right. really. Yeah. Very, very few. <laughs> yeah. They don't. It's skid, skid loaders. Yeah. They don't, and they don't pitch. Silage forks are nice because they're 10, uh, ten tines, and they're generally long tines, and mm-hmm. I like to make our spears as long as we can. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's why we got going on them. Um, and so I got, I got uh, well, auctioneers, like Zemer Auction and and and, uh, and those guys there, they know what to look for for me now. And very cool. We've yeah. had people bidding against each other <laughs> yeah. for the fort. They're bidding up. For yeah, them. for your, your <laughs> <laughs> two guys well, trying yeah, to get to get them a spear. <laughs> that's what I tell these guys that bring bring me forks. I said, if you go to a Zemer Auction, <laughs> yeah. don't be buying yeah. no, don't be betting on uh, betting on any forks for me because Zemer's buying them for me. So yeah. you're gonna be. I'm and just jacking myself jack. up. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. So that happened. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I never realized that that uh, those torsion springs. That was actually the start of my spear making career. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. Those torsion spring, the garage door springs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I mean, where do where do you come into the picture? Then I mean, obviously you uh, you're, you've <laughs> been mentored along and tutored into it. What time? Uh, when did you figure you started making them? Well, then. <laughs> no, uh, so I remember it. That's funny because I I totally remember doing that. Um, and I wasn't I wasn't super young when we were doing that. Uh, but it was funny. I always remember you know, he would he didn't care about telling people what we made him out of because he said it. Well, they got to get them straight, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I made my so my very first spear I made. Uh, 4-H. I was in 4-H for yeah. mom made me be in 4-H yeah. forever. Yeah, you bring it to the fair. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't, I don't think I I don't know if I won which is crap. <laughs> um, that was my very first one and then I made another one uh, my senior senior year of high school for advanced medals. 
Okay. Um, and those were out of the, the garage door springs. And like what, 2008, uh, I graduated in 2007. Okay. So, and the uh, first one, I was probably 15, 16. I'm 33 now, so. Uh, but then I didn't, uh, I didn't make a spear for a long time. Um, it never, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in the shop growing up as much as if somebody knew my dad, uh, <laughs> as much as you would think his son would be in the shop. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't, wasn't something and I did a lot of. It was usually because I had to. Uh, we do, you know, uh, we'd get projects from uh, Minnesota Trap Line oh, is around cool. here. Yep. Um, so we would do some work for them. And awesome. so my experience in the shop usually was like drilling thousands of holes mm -hmm. and belt <laughs> sanding. The now stuff. my wife does that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was all that. Uh, and then, so I moved to, I went into school for drafting and I got a job and I was uh, living in Glenwood. Um, and I was I, I didn't, I wasn't very happy. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it, uh, life kind of went downhill there for, for a while and I kind of had to get my, pick myself up and uh, I was at home um, and I just needed, I was bored, I didn't have anything to do. Yep. Um, I wasn't I wasn't working at the drafting place anymore, and uh, I started. I wanted to make a spear for my best friend growing up. He just lives down the road, and uh, I want I want to make way to spear. He mm -hmm. you, you helped me, and so he helped me, um, and that was number one. And then I wanted to make one for my buddy Ted too, so I made another one, and then a guy. Uh, Roger Howie let us use his trailer to move my stuff out of Glenwood. Dad said, I think you should make him a spear. There you go. <laughs> Great bartering device. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will work for spear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but what I found was uh, that I really enjoyed doing it, and I really, working with my hands, um, something that I hadn't done a whole lot of uh, other than monotonous work, yeah. uh, was really good for men my mental health. Good. And uh, so I just kept doing it, and I liked it. And uh, one of the <laughs> – there's a lot of – I can say a lot of bad things about Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're not sitting here today without Facebook. For sure, um, 100%. Fear the Spear, the group. Mm -hmm. uh, so – in a weird way, John Laska is very responsible for as as much as we've grown. Mm -hmm. um, thanks, John. Yeah. And uh, thank you. But you know, I would. I've always so. A lot of people around here know my dad's a good welder. Um, he's very well respected in the industry. Uh, but a lot of people never realized like. He's an artist. And he's mm -hmm. he's really good. Like he's made, other than Spears, some of the stuff he's made is incredible. Yeah. And uh, Facebook gave me a chance to show my dad off a little bit, and uh, <laughs> uh, and fear the spear especially, because I didn't I didn't post my spears on. I just I would yeah. post my dad's, because mm -hmm. I wasn't even really making them at that point, mm -hmm. and uh, and people were like, oh, where are those? And mm -hmm. you know, it just just kept spreading and yeah. well i mean in a jelly spear if those of you that don't know they're the, easily the most recognizable spear mm -hmm. they've got the wishbone yeah. Yeah. when well, did that start yeah. you know well, I mean, why, why did i'd, start, I'd yeah. assume you started making straight shafts and then eventually <laughs> yes, something yes, so i did yeah you know um, and you know i dennis bertram i've always admired you know dennis bertram's a decoy oh, yeah. carver guy yep. okay and i always admired it you put a thousand decoys in there and i'll point out <laughs> yeah which one's his yeah they got the big lips they yeah. got the big lips and uh and i always i always thought you know that is cool and i admire something like that and so i and i just wanted to do something different and i'm i was at school i remember and i'm screwing around and i thought you know i gotta try this so i i tried to and I didn't have the right equipment at the time there, but I made that wishbone, and I thought, you know, this is, 
this will be different. So, and I could put more weight down there without having a big thick thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to mess with lead or anything like that. Uh, so I thought, well, number one, I get more weight down there, and two, it looks kind of cool. And uh, and 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 it actually it benefit was I could I get more of a uh, a welded I can more of an attachment area from the wishbone to the head of the spear I got a lot more area and then uh, and then the third and more selfish reason is because if you see that you know it's mine yeah <laughs> I sure. laughed my my son when I started really making spears a lot and and my son bought me a hard hard cover spear book and old antique mm -hmm. you know all the old spears yeah I had it for. I know I had it for over six months before I dared page through it because I did not want to see my wishbone in that book. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Hmm. It's hard to be original. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, wanted, I wanted it to be original. And, I, and, and so, I mean, there's a lot of spears out there, and a lot of them look a lot alike. And, but there's only so many ways to make one. <laughs> I don't know. He's reinvented but, the wheel. But, yeah. And I, I'm happy that people like looks at that wishbone and, and it's just, this has been a it's definitely the cadillac of spears i, I, I mean so. it's oh yeah <laughs> you know i was just talking to someone the other day and they're you know we we're talking about your spears and other spears and and um a lot of people that i run into so while i and i know you, people use your spears but the guy i was talking to is well i'm gonna i'm gonna pay that money i'm gonna probably put it on the wall which to me makes it, it two different things it's not only a functional tool it's also a piece of art that someone's willing to put on their wall. And I yeah, think yeah. that is the coolest thing in the world that uh, someone's saying, this is so uh, beautiful, I'm going to stick it on my wall. You know? That's, uh, that's <laughs> one of our, our corny selling points. You say, get to use it all winter, get to hang, enjoy yeah. looking at it all yeah. summer. So <laughs> <laughs> and, we all, and it's yeah, true. Yeah. It's true. Honest yeah. to God, we make them. I, I made it, design it to throw well first, mm -hmm. and then we try to make it pretty seconds. So that's mm -hmm. just... Just how it goes. So yeah. that's cool. So it's always fun to yeah. mess around and come up with something different. We're always trying to. I'm always trying to come up with something a little yeah. different. Yeah, I can even, I can even remember back to, uh, you know, I've been going to Perm for roughly ten years, and I remember like your tines have, your your barbs have changed from like a spring yeah. steel, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, is that yeah, just yeah, is that something yeah, that was just yeah. kind of want to make them better, you know, just transformation over time and just. I know how that goes as a as a decoy carver. I do the same thing. You know, but it and it's uh, you know people. They, I don't know. I suppose some people get mad at us because we you know we got a long list of, of people that want our spears and and then we like. But I like to go to shows mm -hmm. and, and I like to bring and sell them at shows. And the reason one of the biggest reasons is is the feedback you get there. You know, I I, I talk to people. They find out what they do like, what they don't like. You know, that's just part of it. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't you know, you, you, you can find out a lot of good fishing spots, too, if you're talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I and I got invited to a few, but and, and, uh, but it's the, it's the feedback that, you know, what do you like, what you don't you like. And, and, so, yeah. and it's fun to, I mean, it's, we ship, we ship a fair amount of spears, but if we never had to ship another spear again, that would be awesome. Yeah, okay. If we can shake the hand of the person that bought it, thank them, uh, that's the best. Yeah. 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 It's more fun to sell them at a show, I agree, instead of selling them online. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's a good way to sell either way, but meeting the people that are buying it. Um, I'm the president of, or uh, I don't know, chairman, president, whatever you want to call me, of our West Central chapter of the MDAA. So we have meetings on, on November and December and January and February. But uh, and we have a raffle, and we're giving away um, – uh, some cash and chainsaws and ice saws and and stuff like that. But uh, we always, I have for a while now, we both chip in on this. We build a spear for that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year we put it on our raffle ticket because we didn't have a show because of COVID. Yeah. Right. And we used to do that in the early years, but for about 10, 12 years in a row, uh, until last year, we sell tickets at the door, uh, as many as anybody wants to buy, mm -hmm. and somebody at that show is going to win that spear. Yep. I give it, we give it 
we make the rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and because I want to shake the hand. Yeah. Uh, and everybody that comes to that decoy show for that last one of the year, those are spear fishermen. Uh, there's lots of guys that buy my tickets or buy tickets that don't spear. They just get somebody out of their their nephew out of their hair, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and and so it sticks yeah. in the closet. So I I want somebody that's going to use it, and enjoy it. And so we say, all right, this is how we're going to do it. And uh, and I think uh, the last or two years ago they sold nine hundred dollars. <laughs> there's only uh, about ninety people there, and they sold nine hundred dollars worth of tickets. Yeah. For just wow. a spear. And that's. Wow. You know, you're probably going to sell those raffle tickets regardless. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's like nine hundred dollars extra. Yeah, just that's just an extra thing coming yeah. in. And yeah, yeah it, it's fun. It. So we we use that money. Um, our dark our group we donate to uh, uh, the trap teams. You know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. We want to do something with DNR. Uh, <laughs> They're so difficult to work with. <laughs> <laughs> just, they never got any money, and, they, and, and you try to help them out. And, and uh, so we've had one good uh, session with them. We fixed up a pond one time, but uh, generally our, our money is donated to Let's Go Fishing. And mm-hmm. in the uh, high school, there we had Kirk Coven, Murdoch, uh, Wilmer, Delon Spicer, Painesville, Litchfield. Maybe it was just five. Talking to them. We donate. And then Prairie, uh, you guys probably don't heard of this, but Prairie Woods Environmental is is, is a, just, uh, they got a, I don't know, probably got four, 400 acres, 500 acres, uh, just uh, south of my place, about, as a crow flies, about six miles, I suppose. But big facility there, and that's just, uh, and it's, it's, it's for nature and youth, and you know, it's just a really, do a really good thing. So we we donate to all things like that. Mm-hmm. I noticed too uh, on Facebook you guys are donating a, a child spear. Yeah, yeah. A youth thought, model. That was a that, youth model. That's really cool. <laughs> or uh, shallow water, as yeah. we call it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that. Uh, yeah, we're doing that. Yeah. Um, and that's next week or something, maybe. Yeah, or? I'm gonna do it Monday because yeah. I want to try to get it to them for be- Christmas. Make sure Santa can yeah get it there. That's awesome. There you go. But we do, we did it last year, uh, and it was just kind of. I've always wanted to give a kid. Mm-hmm. I want kids to get into the sport. Right. I think it's really important, um, and that's like why I've been uh, such a big fan of like uh, Northern Spiked and those guys because they just right. they're promoting the sport, yeah. um, and we we need people, and we especially need youth because they're. They're the future of it. Like, uh, if we spearmen die out, and then you know, pretty pretty soon, all the laws are going to change, and we won't be able to spear. Uh, and I know, like, for me, how much I love spearing growing up, um, and it's pretty cool that uh, <laughs> that a kid can. Their first spear will be one of ours. Yeah. <laughs> and They'll uh, probably make a collector down the road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, that's like the guy that shoots the giant buck yeah, on yeah. his first year. The first spear is a jelly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but it, it's cool to me that like like a eight-year-old is going to, they're going to get their first fish with a spear I made. That's cool. Um, and that's, I mean, that's kind of making spear, and you, decoy makers, I'm sure, feel the same way. Like, mm-hmm. it's so cool to think that maybe hopefully fingers crossed like 40 years down the line like a grandchild is going to be <coughs> using a spear that yeah. his grandpa mm-hmm. gave him and yeah. i made it yeah like, we were even talking on the way down here we said you know uh we were talking about a, a pimple spear that you guys had sold or uh that you guys had sold at a show and i just said you know at at the time that he was making that you know a long time ago did he think that that thing is being used today? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. would he think, you know, 50, 70, 80, 100 years later that spear would be used? And that people would be clamoring for <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I got a, this, we had a meeting here. Um, oh, it was, I guess it was uh, early last, uh, late last fall probably. We had it at New London Legion. And then we had this one guy, uh, he's a big farmer down by, uh, 
Lily, not Lake Lily in uh, Clear City, I guess, but I guess it don't matter. But he lives on Earl Lake right now, and uh, he's a avid spearman, and uh, he he's kind of new to our group, our, our West Central uh, Dark House Association. We had a meeting. We were dispersing our funds for the years what we were doing. And, and he made a comment. He says, uh, he didn't say much for quite a while. And, and uh, like the first meeting, I invited him, and the first meeting he'd ever come to the board of directors. And uh, he says, so what are you doing to promote spearing to youth? And he said, I want to see what this group is doing to promote that. And what does any group really do to promote that? Mm-hmm. And so that really got me thinking. Now, I come from a teaching background at, at, at Ridgewater, and uh, and uh, we always we always have um, well, there's a state competition. It's a welding competition, and it, it's called. It used to be called VICA, Vocational Industrial Clubs of America. Now they call it U.S. Skills, um, and so uh, my students would would they'd practice and do all its different kinds of welds, and then they go to the cities, and there's competition there, and then you. If you win there, you go to the nationals. If you do well in the nationals, you can go to international trials. Anyway, um, but last year, because of COVID, um, we used to have a, uh, we, we started this many years ago too. It, it was a high school welding contest. So we'd invite high schools into our shop and uh, we'd have a welding competition. And um, Cambridge always did really, really well. Uh, they got a good a good program, uh, secondary, you know, high school welding program there. So they'd come there and they'd clean house just about all the time. New London Spicer did quite well, and we'd have uh, at one time we had a hundred and we had 137 kids that went through there. We had to give them each a welding test, uh, a written test, and a uh, they could go in they could gas weld or they could arc weld or they could TIG weld or they could wire weld. So four different contests mm-hmm. and so we do all this and 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 uh but last year because of covid they couldn't come there so what they did they wanted to have the contest anyway so they talk, got a hold of schools and they had the kids told them what to what to uh, no they that we had all the welds uh fixed up already tacked together so then they'd take them out to these schools and then they would weld them up there and they'd bring them back mm-hmm. and judge them that got me thinking. Now, this year, uh, COVID is better. I don't know, better or worse, but um, they're going to have the competition again. But what I thought we should do, what I want to do, what we should do, is we're going to have a spear building contest for these high school kids. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have them make a spear at their school and bring it to the competition. And us, and maybe some other guys like not unlike your not not unlike yourselves would we would be judges and, and figure out which one's the best one. Now, if he builds a spear, he's probably damn well going to use it too, wouldn't he? Yeah. I mean, him and his buddy, and this would be quite a deal. Because I know I know that um, our middle son Nick, um, when he was in high school. Uh, <laughs> they were uh, making spears in high school, and everybody in the class is met. Because I know they took all my s- silver brazing alloy. He took it from home and <laughs> took it there and, and used it all up. They were straightening yes. out torsion springs, but they made like carp spears, you know, yep. uh, longer handle ones. But God, everybody in the class is making them. So they get going on it, and it just bloomed. You know, and, and, and I, I guess what got me thinking about it was like the guy, uh, you got to help me out now. I think there's a guy from, is it Brainerd? Uh, he was a shop teacher. Yeah, uh, Bob Johnson. Bob or, or Rick? So I, I don't know, but Jason, he made decoys. Yep. Can you have the class make decoys? Yep, yep. That's, that's Bob. Bob Johnson. And then Bob, Bob Johnson, that's he, right. Yeah, no, Rick has kind of taken over Bob's position. Now okay. Bob has passed away. Yep. Yeah, and now, so I, I'm thinking that, you know, this is something on the same vein as that, yeah. possibly. Yeah. Oh, Rick, we're going to make the spears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is my dream, and I, <laughs> I, and I hope I can get her done this year. I don't know. Yeah. We should have, we should have got on that a little bit. If there's any high schoolers watching, don't use rebar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's first tip. Question. Um, 
someone like so for like myself i've thought it'd be it'd be fun to try to try my hand at making a spear yeah. what does a guy all need <laughs> i mean what does what can you get away with and what is it nice to have okay so for let me let me say something quick um so you know i've i built quite a few I, i'm i'm like 182 now okay. um and I've gotten, I don't even like to look at my old ones. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I get a lot of compliments. And and it's, it's very nice of them and everything. Uh, but really a lot of people could probably do what I do um, if they had the tools. you got to have the tools. And then the other thing you have to have is Lauren Jelly is your father. <laughs> but, <laughs> I've already uh, asked to be adopted yeah, so I can yeah. come hunting at this nice cabin <laughs> <No>. you've got. <laughs> but if you you need a good you need a good teacher, you really do. Okay. Um, well, yeah. If if you're gonna make, I don't know, maybe to clarify, if you just wanted to make your own spear, yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, a little knowing a little bit about metals is good. You know, most people they just go grab some round stock that looks like a semi, looks like a tine, and they. And they probably got their little wire feeder, and they weld barbs on, and they grind off what don't look <coughs> like a barb. <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of spears out there like that. And I applaud anybody who wants to try to do that because that that's uh, well, that's how we got started, you know. So he's a tough critic. Yeah, but <laughs> but I mean, you know, for us, we got to have oxyacetylene. We got we got to know how to silver braze. We need uh, need how to braze. We need how to TIG weld. Um, we don't use any wire at all on, on you know, no wire welding, but most people that are beginners uh, will probably be using wire. Mm -hmm. And um, because that's that's uh, that's what they got, and that's, they, they think that's easy, but. It's, you know, I, really I am, I'm, I'm very fortunate because, you know, we have dad, dad is a professional welder. Uh, he has a great TIG machine. Um, and a professional teacher. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I always, I, he's not the most patient person I've ever <laughs> met in my life, but at the same time. Uh, You're not either. No, no, I am my father's son, as they say. But, uh, you know, I used, to, I used to gripe about that a lot more, but he, uh, he's put up with me for 180-some spears now in his shop and he's been uh beyond patient because i still i still ask a ton of questions um he still helps me get stuff uh because we've they've evolved we've done a lot of twisting mm -hmm. um it's hard to get that stuff straight mm -hmm. and we need to send out straight spears and uh i don't Almost every one, I'm like, Dad, how do you get this? <laughs> how do you think you, you, you do this? And I'm the guy with the bad eyesight. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, it's it, it's really helpful to have good tools. Um, and just pay, patience with yourself, really, because, uh, like, I, I can be pretty hard on myself sometimes, and it, it, uh, it requires some patience and just just know that you're learning <laughs> uh and that it's going to get better because i mean i've taken some i take a lot of pictures of spears because mm -hmm. i pretty much do all the social media and stuff like that um and like i i could put a side by side of a, a spear from five years i that's when i started that's so i stamped those first two spears i made in high school i didn't i didn't count those um so zero zero one uh, was about five years ago now. Okay. Um, Is there a distinguishable um, characteristics like if someone if you set your dads and yours side by side or are they pretty much the same? Uh, of, since you're using the same tools, you're kind of using the same method. Well, I you know my he it's a jelly it's a Lauren jelly spear. Yeah. So my spear is gonna be he's got to okay it. Sure. Um, Quality control. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was. He's been QC for a long time. Uh, but over time, you know, I've made enough now. I think I I would be able to tell. Yeah. Um. You kind of 
you kind of find something that fits your eye, right? Mm -hmm. And I make, I don't even try to do it, but I'll make a five tine, mm -hmm. and I'll set it next to another five tine, and I like we don't use jigs or anything. Really, we just there's never two the same. No, awesome. We That's found this out. You know, we find a five tine guard laying around. It won't fit on anything. It won't fit nothing. <laughs> so I should tell my brother-in-law, who makes a lot of sphere covers, don't uh, yeah. think that they're all going to fit each other. Because <laughs> no. he, he'll have people, no. hey, can you make a sphere no. cover for this? You, know, yeah. you probably shouldn't be saying this. Yeah. But, uh, like, ideally, your your uh, guard would be symmetrical. Right? Right. Yeah. You yeah. can flip it well, either yeah. way. Yeah. No, no, not mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what's cool. You know, that kind of goes back to even I know in, in our industry doing decoys is that that what's cool is when they're handmade, you know, there's, they don't be in not the same. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. You know, just like every decoy, you know, isn't I the would same. say that, uh, uh, for me now, just looking on what he, how he builds the spear compared to what I do. Uh, and, and, and his, his will be <laughs> a, a little bit wider at the base than they are up here by the bend. Yeah. So they flare slightly mm -hmm. and, and mine are going to be a little straighter. And that, and that's just, uh, they weren't always that way. That kind of came from, I think dad made one that was a little bit flared and it got a lot of positive feedback. Mm -hmm. So we just started like, hey, would you like it flared or would you like it? And then, you know, we don't, we don't ask all those questions all the <clears throat> time now. Uh, Cause yeah, right. it's nice to have a little <coughs> bit of, I guess, freedom. artistic yeah, freedom. Exactly, yeah. for sure. Um, it, yeah, my favorite thing is what they're when they're just like make something cool, right? Yep. You're like that's okay. the best words you can. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Because your heart's in it, then. Where yeah, I feel anyway. If someone tells you, "I want this, this, and this," and well, I didn't really feel like making that, but I'll try. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it always turns out better too when you can, when it is your own. You know, when I'm not yeah. having to cookie cutter something mm -hmm. for somebody else. So. It's funny though. That, um, Sometimes I see some of my old spears and it's embarrassing. Yeah, no, I, I'm just ashamed to say I made that. <laughs> I agree. Same oh, yeah. thing with me. Yeah. I bought <laughs> I bought some of his old fish from a you know ten years back, yeah. and he's like, "Why did you buy that yeah. thing?" <laughs> <laughs> but it's even like just the five years since I started like the evolution, um, and that you know, Dad was making them forever before that. Uh, It'll be interesting to see your. Evo your, how your spears evolve now the more years you get under your belt you know yeah. because you might you're going to get better at what you're doing and you've probably got different ways you're going to want to do it well and it, it what's cool is like you know uh, I started making them and iPhones were a thing already so I have pictures of my first spear oh, on that's awesome and well sometimes because <laughs> <laughs> I like I'll look and I'll have Facebook memories <laughs> pop up of spears that I made and that I was proud of at the time and I'm like mm -hmm. we don't need to <laughs> we don't need to see that but at the same time there's still like I'll still stand by those spears nope. they're still going to throw well and they're still going to hold fish they just the work's a little more crude mm -hmm. well take it from somebody like me where most of my first fish I would make fish number one, two, three, and then when I made fish number four, I took fish number one and cut the lead out of it with a bandsaw, <laughs> remelted the lead to make fish number five. So the, yeah. the, the first fish I made were, yeah. 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 you know. Sacrificing yeah. themselves yeah, for new. exactly. They were recycled. Yeah. <laughs> I've made, uh, I probably made a half a dozen decoys, but I only had one pattern kind of. Mm -hmm. But mine were not wood. I made mine out of aluminum. So. <laughs> Cause that's uh, that's my. What's your favorite color to use down a spear <laughs> hole? What do you think? <laughs> was, I, I bet you it's red and white. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, I I laughed about that when you guys were talking about it because, I mean, it yeah, it's red and white. It's <laughs> it's always been red and white. Um, I was gonna ask you guys at the beginning, but uh, we usually ask this to everyone: What's your favorite spearing memory? I don't know. I probably shouldn't tell it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I'd have to think about that a little bit. I, I mean, hear, I didn't hear the question. What what's your it? favorite spearing memory? Like, oh, favorite ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that thing. Did you spear it with that spear? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I actually found that spear sitting out here on, on uh, uh, I don't know how where it was. It was, it was on this farm somewhere. Yeah. 
And I had the guy, I said, uh, that mounted it for me. How I big said, is it? Uh, I don't know. I think it was probably only about 16 pounds. Yeah, it looks big. Hmm. It happens in a hurry, though. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was almost mad because it, I was, it was getting dark and, and all of a sudden, here he comes, going to take my sucker. You don't take my sucker. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even have a rope in my hand. And I pull him up and stuck him yeah. against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I probably don't have one specific one at this time, but, like, so where we were, where the shop was, yeah. um, there's a small lake right there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's no public access. It's like a glorified sleep. It's natural environment lake. Is what yeah, it is. and uh, that's you know I'm not a, I'm not a well traveled spear. <laughs> um, I've you know I've just recently, a couple years ago, went to Devil's Lake for the first time, and uh, we went to North Dakota last year. Uh, but I pretty much always just would go out there because it's easy, and so not, easy. Yeah. It's generally not a lot of big big fish in there. And it will, you know, there's been really, really good years. It had to be exciting when you got your 39 incher last year. Yeah, though. yeah, that, yeah. I mean, it was, but I think one, one day it's just going to be like when I was a kid, I could just go home, get home from school, and hop on the four wheeler or the three wheeler mm -hmm. or whatever, and to go drive out and uh, <laughs> sit for an hour yeah. until. And I could do that whenever, and I still, over, you know, I'm making spears. Three o'clock comes, I might take a little break and go yeah. <laughs> go sit in the spear house. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't, I hope that I can go out on Swan for the rest of my life. Yeah. I don't know if I will <laughs> be able to, but, uh, you know, it's like all my spearing memories are on Swan almost. And, uh, <coughs> well, I just thought of a... Funny one. Dad made our uh, <laughs> made a little. How big's the s small house that you made that Nick's using now? Oh, it's four by eight. Four by eight, aluminum, uh, light as can be. I suppose you didn't make much out of wood. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> you no. didn't make a wood spear house. <laughs> no, I have a father-in-law that's well, just like. Yeah, I'm <laughs> smart enough to know you, you, you got to use wood for your studs and stuff because you got to yeah. insulate them, you know. So. Yeah. My floors and everything are, are all aluminum. So I used to take cut up or like the floor trusses. I'd, I'd uh, get old aluminum ladders mm -hmm. and cut them up because they're they're really really stiff and and you know they're, they're only and you just put them in there and that makes just a solid floor. My uncle actually put one on Fear the Spear with that was made up that way, and somebody's like. Is that a ladder? <laughs> <laughs> That's a patent from Lauren Jelly. <laughs> uh, it worked, worked really good. You know. But anyways, we put the, that house out on Swan, and there wasn't any snow out yet. It was probably pretty early ice, and Dad, it was just Dad and I. And we're out there. Uh, I don't know if we had snow cleats or not, but the wind picked decent gust of wind, but that thing weighs nothing, and the ice was glare ice. I'm watching my dad chase, <laughs> chase the the fish house down, just running on ice. And uh, the only way that he caught up to it was it eventually hit cattails, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and just stuff like we. And then on games, we had to retrieve it. It was floating like a bobber one time, yeah. Yeah. and just yeah. And that's everything. I don't know. I think all my memories will probably involve involve him. He he tig welds his uh, license number nice. on all his fish houses. I, <laughs> no he, stealing that. No. His, yeah. his uh, welding is more legible than my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I had a friend up in uh, uh, Grand Rapids. I call him Grand Nate. Nate Huntley. His name is. Um, he come to a decoy show. He, in Grand Rapids, when they had they had them, they used to have them in a different time. I just had it over Thanksgiving weekend here, well, uh, Saturday before last, I guess, uh, two weeks ago today. Anyway, uh, but they used to have a different time of year, so I can get up there. But I got a whole house full of company now, so I can't can't go up there. But Grand Nate got to be a good friend of mine. I went up there spearing a little bit with him, and then he, he got a friend that uh, got dog sled. So we did that uh, a basswood dog sled trip. Oh yeah, we did that yeah. twice. Um, First time, uh, well, it was just me and him, 
And then the second time, I took my oldest son with me. I was part of his uh, birthday present. Mm -hmm. And uh, but that first time up there, uh, that was something else because uh, me and Nate were sitting there. We seen we seen quite a few fish, and and you know you got to have what over thirty six inches, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to tell sometimes. They look so huge. And then you you know you go through all this where, well, your decoys eight inches long or nine inches and then and when that fish comes in from the front of his nose to the back of his gill if that is eight inches that would make him 36 inch at least mm. 36 inches mm -hmm. illegal that's mm -hmm. you go through all that that's interesting because most of my decoys are eight inches so i'll have to remember that that's that's how they judge them yeah i mean how oh wait but in this case, <laughs> I was sitting there. We hadn't seen anything for about two hours, one o'clock, and I'm on my phone with my buddy from. Uh, uh, he was in Arizona, so, um, so I'm talking to him, and, and I look down, and I, I don't know if I, I can't, I won't say this on camera. I guess, but, <laughs> holy cow! And measuring your decoy well this didn't matter this time because my decoy was uh, a dennis bertram a 27 inch <laughs> that's the yeah. only thing we had with 27 inch dennis bertram decoy i've Red seen him uh, have them at perm before yeah. yeah those big ones that's that's what i had and i asked him i said what in the world do you spear with that he's like you'd be surprised you how many will come in surprised. on that big that's fishy right. big fish we <laughs> had no suckers we had no other decoys that's the only thing we brought with. <laughs> wow and i had them Facing me, and that's how you want to. You want any decoy. You want it to face you. If 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 it's a big one like that, because you're not going to swim it. Because it'll mm -hmm. come in from the side. Fish will like come in from the sides or to, from the front. To hit that's, them. So you got a better shot at it. Yeah. But anyway, I'm looking down, and, and there's there's no doubt that this thing. This looked like a a, a, a a log coming in. And I. I hung up my phone. I, I swore slightly. <laughs> I put my phone. The time I got my spear in my hand, and he'd swam r right past that decoy. And then he got he got out, and it was just like a big old battleship making yeah. a turn. And I said, "Oh, please come back!" And he turned, and he started coming at me, and I choked. Oh no! <laughs> he, he's coming, and I. I had the spear in the water, and and, and he kept on. He was going to go right underneath me. He'd have been right underneath me, but I couldn't wait. I threw, I threw that thing. If I had hit him, I'd have cut him in half. <laughs> 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 I threw so hard, and my buddy Nate says, he laughed. He said, "You missed him." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I missed. Him. He said, "You hit him right." You know, a big fish is bottom lip will, will stick out. Yeah. Shut that up. <laughs> um, I hit him right there, center time, because <laughs> he was he was still out in front of me, yeah. and a little deflection, and I and that would that was my uh, that would made that one look like a little one there. That was uh, he would have been 23, 24 pounds. And the spear oh. is still stuck in the bottom of the lake. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got that one at home. I got that home. My wife won't let me sell it. It's got um, uh, Ron Garden hire. Um, Kent Herbeck, um, Joe Vavra, and one other guy's uh, uh, signatures on it. Really? So they cool. signed it. Yeah. That's that's awesome. My uh, uh, daughter-in-law is uh, executive director of the ALS Society for, well, it was for Minnesota, North and South Dakota, but right now she's for uh, half the country right now. She's the executive director for that. Anyway, a big fundraiser up in Duluth. It's called uh, Blizzard Tour. And... Ron Gardenhire was uh, a big, uh, well, uh, Herbeck's dad died of ALS. Um, oh, uh, uh, Terry Steinbach signed it too. Mm -hmm. Terry Steinbach, he was the catcher for uh, Oakland A's. He's from Minnesota, from uh, New Orleans. He played Orleans. for the Twins for yeah. a little bit. Yep. yep, late in his career. And uh, he, he's, uh, anyway, they, he, they, they're using it for a fundraiser, so they would take, uh, uh, I made it. He said, Dad, would you make, make me a spear? I'll take it up there and get these guys to sign it, and maybe we'll sell it and get the money to ALS. Okay. That's cool. Well, uh, I made it, and, and he didn't sell it. So he got him to sign it all, really? and I, then I got to keep it. So. I was going to th think maybe you bought it back or something, yeah. your own spear. but no. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that was the spear that I 
I wanted to spear one fish with it and then hang it up, and that's the one I had up there. I missed. <laughs> I told my buddy, I said, I guess I'm a better spear maker than I am, spear, <laughs> than, a, than I am a spearer. Uh, so. His other line is, I've never had buck fever, but I got pike fever. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I've had big, uh, you know, what? it's like that fish right there. They come in, boom, done. And I always said, you know, it'd be fun to enjoy it. You know, see him come in and just, to, and uh, you know, it's like watching that big buck from a long ways away come in and then you finally get him. And and I got that opportunity. I messed it up. Ooh. Oh, well. Um, makes a good story. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your inspiration? Like, what is your, you, do you have a favorite spear maker? No. You don't? I do not. He likes pimp. I, you he, know, he I, I, I like pimple. I, 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 I do. Um, I, I, I very much admire, uh, those guys are amazing. I mean, they, they truly are. And, and nowadays we're too lazy to go through all the work that those guys did to make one, but I will make one. I will. I'm going to, I'm going to make a wedge. Were they forged? Or? Yeah. yeah. I'll forge it. Yeah. Yeah. I got some plans on a, on a really, really neat one, but I know the guys up in my area that were blacksmiths that made the Skipleys, they uh, took the old hay rake tines, or hay rake tines, and then they forged them and made the yeah. key stock, yeah. or, or the, yeah. the wedge yeah. key. I have made uh, 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 forged uh, barbs on them. I, uh, there's a trick where the old blacksmiths would take a, you know, you'd have a, a straight pound out a shaft, and, and, and then you'd heat it up about two inches from the end and you'd fold that around and you'd forge that back together and then that part would be the barb. Yep, sure. That's how they made them. And I, I've done that. I've made several spears like that. But uh, I haven't done it for quite a while now. But Now i got a better forge. Before I was trying to do that with a torch. Very difficult to do with a torch. It's, it's, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't realize how not the same it was. <laughs> it was... A, there's, there's quite a difference between a torch and, and a soaking heat of a forge. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's it was interesting listening to you guys last night. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, oh, man, we're not going to be good interviews for oh, that. Oh, no. Because, <laughs> uh, because, you know, we're not, we're not, spear, we're not spear collectors. Mm -hmm. um, no. I've started, I have a few decoys now, but I'm not, I wouldn't consider myself a collector. Um you know, I see ones that I like. Like, I got one from yeah. you finally. I saw it sitting there, and yeah. I forgot you bought one from him. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, where'd yeah. you get that? <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, I, I love your knot hole one. I, oh. I'm going to get one of those someday. <laughs> um, but spears, you know, and people, well, what other spears do you like? And I would just be like, my dad made me my first spear. I, I like jelly spears, yeah. you know? Like, I've, I was lucky enough my dad made me a spear, and it's mm -hmm been the only spear i've ever thrown other than the one i've made myself so uh mm -hmm. and dad you know he's he made his own and that's true he's <laughs> you know and it oh, really sometimes it you. comes off as a little brash or arrogant but it, it's just yeah. it generally we that's the we only just, reason i use the spear i got right now because i forgot to number it mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i put it on the inside of wishbone and i i thought i ain't cutting it apart i ain't cutting it apart so i i uh I said, well, that's going to be mine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So if he ever, oh, I might keep this one. Don't believe him. Yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just getting the price up on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unnumbered. <laughs> this one's unnumbered. Yeah, I did a, see like a, an artist uh, proof. Yeah. I fixed, a, a straightened out a, uh, a guy come from Painesville here. Um, what was it, last, this, last this week? This past week. Yeah. And he brought in a Clark. Yeah, it was a Clark. I'd yeah. never seen one like it in yeah. person. And I couldn't find many pictures of it. I was looking on online, and but it was it was cool. It's uh, he said it was Clark, and and I believe it's Clark. Uh, but uh, th those are an amazing piece of machinery too, and and I got to believe he did a lot with a turning lathe on that. Uh, hmm. Just either that or he's he's pretty good welder, and he. Uh, learn to polish because you mm -hmm. don't see any wells on it you know they, they, they just it uh, was just a nice transfer from the shaft into a bulbous area kind of a weighted area yep. and then it then it then it went back to 
a flat, and that's where the, the tines went through and the wedge went through, and it was just s- seamless. And it was I thought this guy's this guys are good. And he'd been using it since like '69 or something. Yeah. Wow. He, he just yeah. needed it straight. He got like a '43 three inch, and it bent it a little yeah. bit. Wow. Yeah. I had straighten tines out on yeah. it. Even those old Piece ones, that, like that, <laughs> as heavy as they were, you could you get bent up with them okay. big ones thrashing around on the floor. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah. So um, we don't have to end it right now. If you guys have more you want to talk about, but one thing I wanted to get out before we forget um, is how do people contact you? What's the best way if they want a spear? I know you have a I know you have a, a list like everyone does, but oh. um, yeah, this actually gives me a opportunity to clear some stuff yeah. up. Uh, yeah, so Facebook is the best way to do it. Um, that's for ease of organizing and all of that uh, because we've gone through <laughs> troubles in the past when we got messages, even mm-hmm. even separate business and personal right. Facebook uh but people would call that. Okay, I'll put you on the list. Well, we got like four lists now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and we've missed people in the past. I apologize. Um, we always try to make one, yeah. <laughs> make it up to them. Yeah. Um, and another thing is that we both we both have access uh, to our Facebook page. Um, what I've noticed has happened a time or two or more. Um, is we'll get a message and dad will see it but typically I'm the one that replies to all these but once dad sees it it's no longer a new notification and if it's really hard to stay to be working in the shop and answering questions so sometimes if you don't hear back from us message us again Uh, but Facebook is the best way to do it Um, we uh, we give out our note like if We'll give out our number. I don't typically like post it on our page, um, just because we don't have. We're we're small. Right. It's we're yeah. small, and we have we have. Uh, I think right now we, I haven't counted, but it's over sixty spears uh, to make, mm-hmm. and they take time. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's We'd, probably just like us too. I mean, if if you stuck strictly to orders, nobody would. I mean. Yeah. Everybody would just be standing in a line for a long time. I'm I'm similar as you as like yeah. I love going to the shows <laughs> and meeting these people because you see names on Facebook or whatever and they they love yeah. your stuff and it's it's sad that you couldn't make one for everybody. Yeah. But um so yeah, I'm in the same boat where like yeah. I, I try to release a few so people can get their hands on them for a Christmas gift or whatever, blah blah blah. And then like I said, <coughs> you know, or just like you, I try to have some for the shows so we can go yeah. to the shows and you yeah. know, and it's fun. Yeah. The other thing is He's 71 years old, um, and he's made a lot of spears, and making orders doesn't really do it for him anymore. He'll make them, but he's not going to – he's he's supposed to be retired. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know, he's going to be in the shop one way or the other, but he should be doing something that he wants. So I'm I'm handling majority of the orders. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, my brother Nick um, has made some spears as well, uh, but – He's, he's 16, he's, uh, 20. He's a, if, <laughs> he'll build a spear if he needs to buy a new ice auger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then he'll build a spear if he had the money to buy an ice auger. There That's kind of the way he is. So. Um, but, yeah, so it's the patience is is key. And most, you know, like 99% of the people are great to work with. Uh, but it is going to take some time to fulfill those orders, especially one person. And if I'm... We don't, the, the future is uncertain as far as how many hours we're going to be able to work on them. Especially, you know, prior to me going back to school, we're, dad was retired, Nick and I worked full-time jobs. Uh, we're not going to be able to kick out, yeah. <laughs> kick out spears, you know, they take, they take some time. Used to, used to be that uh, before you started, uh, my first spear I would make during the uh, fall would be, well, the middle of September, they have a thing down here. It's like that Anoka Game Fair. It's called Prairie Pothole. Okay. And uh, uh, we we set up there our Dark House Association, our, our, our 
West Central group would set up there, and, and I'd make one, and then we'd sell tickets for it and give that to the Prairie Pothole for their pothole restoration thing, mm -hmm. fundraiser for them, and I'd donate that. Um, and that'd be the first one I'd make. That'd be uh, like the first, so the first week in September I'd be working on it, and then when it got to be uh, pre uh, Perm, when I got done with Perm, that was the last one I made. So I took off all that time between. But I do a lot of things in my shop. I fix boat props and um, boats and, and and anything aluminum all summer long. It's mm -hmm. crazy. I, all the stuff I, I keep doing. Banner yeah. year for boat props. Well, it's nice <laughs> It's nice to change things up, too, for you. I'm dry sure. with yeah. low water. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, skegs on them, pontoons. Oh, God. But so I just kind of took it off. But. Now, it, this is a uh, year-round endeavor right now with all the, you know, we took off, thir what, 13 months we shut down taking orders? Yeah, we didn't take orders for 13 a year. months we quit um, just to catch up. And it might be. That's going to happen it, again. It could be. We're getting close to maybe doing that again because I don't, I don't know. I need to talk to somebody that is a little more business savvy than I am about, like, what, what the correct thing to do is. But right now, I mean, we're going to be. We're going to be, we're, nobody that orders from now on is getting it this season for sure. I don't like saying that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm the same yeah, way. Yeah, you, you said that last night. Yeah, it's like, you know, if somebody takes my order, you know, you know how your hands get busy doing something, you're at work or whatever, and you just, it's like, well, man, now they've been waiting for a year. You hate doing that. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, it's an art thing, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. And we're, you know, we try to be pretty transparent about it. Uh, and it's just, you know, people ask for estimated. I, it's just, I honestly don't know. I might be working a different job in five months. Like, I might be, and then it's going to be longer. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be longer, yeah. you know. Like, right now I can work on them uh, as much as I want. But it's, uh, you know, and it, I don't want it to feel like a job for Dad because it's something that he did. And he, he's said that it has been it's a little bit he's letting it because he doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to do. But he kind of feels, I think he feels like it to help help the people out and get it this, done. This lists are very um, overwhelming. Yeah, stressful. You know, the stressful because you always have it on your mind. And yeah. it might not be what you want to make at the time. And, and it just, you don't want to piss people off or, make them disappointed and if they they call you and say hey i need this for a birthday or a christmas present i mean it makes you feel like you need to do it but i understand that it's, i it's bet hard. you know i bet you guys are, are just like us if you're in the shop you're making decoys <laughs> or spears uh, you wish you were in that spear house yeah <laughs> you're in that spear house or, like, I should or in the deer stand yeah, yeah exactly that's yeah. that's uh yeah. and you shouldn't have that uh, when yeah. you're out in a spear house it should be i'm out in the spear yeah, house your mind is wandering and just say uh, i feel good so uh, what's fortunate for me is, is is the lake that i live on right there and i can just you can go out there for 45 minutes so you leave the heat on and, and uh, go out there for 45 minutes and sit and get your little fix in and ah, get the hell out of here but but it's at the same time it's awesome yeah. like it's so cool that i never ever would have imagined somebody would pay mm -hmm. me that much money to make them something yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah it's an honor definitely and it's yeah. it's cool just yeah. it's a lot of weight and pressure you know uh, and i gotta say this because uh, i've said this before but uh, uh, and this is true um, I, I started doing these beers not uh, just because i, I wanted to mm -hmm. i never realized that um what a legacy that i'm giving him and my other boys mm -hmm. so uh, so what What's going to happen? And I mean, all the spears. How many are you going to build? You don't know. You might have. Yeah, you might be in the thousands. You don't know. Yeah, but, no, I won't be close. But this is, uh, <laughs> and, and, and this is something that uh, you know, I got no intention. Of, uh, I didn't plan on this, but it just happens. And um, so I'm really happy that uh, the boys can uh, get in on this thing. And, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's super cool. Like he he did something that right now I'm living like making enough money to live off of something that he made. Yeah. Um, Pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's it's super cool. And I, you know, I just want people to know these are his spears. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, I just had a good teacher mm -hmm. that had a nice shop that I could work with. <laughs> You're the apprentice. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's cool. They yeah. have, like our kids are doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, they they drive us nuts in the shop right oh, now because yeah. they're splashing in our swim tanks and and uh, Addie, my little girl, picks up my paint brushes and they're mashed in the dirt. She's painting with lacquer thinner and wrecking the bristles. It's <laughs> Putting like, oil in your swim tank. Yeah, it's like okay, well, but yeah, it's the same thing. You get to pass that down, so that's fun. That is neat. Yeah. Is there anything else you guys want to want to get on uh, get Put off out your in chest? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> About spearing or anything. Just, you know. anything yeah. <laughs> no. This is open mic time. No. Yeah. 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 I well, I just want to thank you guys for coming yeah. down. Oh, oh, this is super fun. Amazing. This yeah. is like, this is awesome. This is like my uh, it, when I envision. I sit down and at home, you know, we talk to the old timers that that spear all the time, and you, and I always thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a camera sitting up in the corner? <laughs> that you, you could record it because. It, yeah. Some of that yeah. stuff is getting lost, yeah. you know, yeah. and how they yeah. used to burn corn cobs for yeah. 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 wood stove. Just th little things like that you find yeah. out yeah. that you would have never known, you know. I I heard stuff from him today that I I never knew. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's cool. We used to go up in the, we used to, we, you know, back in them old days, uh, we was always fishing Norway Lake. There's always another lake. Uh, but uh, dad, dad would... Uh, we're gonna go spear, and, or it might be sun fishing too, you know. Yep. And uh, and I remember Dad, uh, uh, he had a ice chisel, and uh, some guy borrowed it, and he's gonna to chop open a hole up, and and, and he chopped, and, and he didn't hang on to it was just thin icy, so he he expected some resistance, and there yeah. was none, and it went right down and stuck. And the guy paid my dad, he gave Dad money for that chisel. So dad went and bought an ice auger with the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and the next day we went out there, uh, we found that hole. I remember they took an old windmill rod and they made a hook and they found that hole and they hooked and they got the, spirit, uh, the chisel back out again too. But uh, that about them same uh, time, we'd, if we were going to go out fishing, sun fishing, we'd go up in our, uh, my brother and I, we'd go up in the top of our greenery and it'd be all dusty up there from mm -hmm. grinding feed and stuff and and you pick those there'd be some old boards laying up there you pick them boards up and these these we call them golden grubs they're about an uh, inch and a quarter long and kind of yellow and, and they'd sl slide right on the hook there almost yeah. i don't know what they were some kind of larva for something but yep. we would get uh soup cans and and we'd put a dozen in each one put some straw in there or whatever and then we'd walk around and sell those for 35 cents <laughs> all, these, all these fishermen out there and they were really good sunfish bait so we'd go home with a whole pocket full of change afterwards yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, i remember doing that as a kid too my grandparents had a dairy farm and they would windrow the hay yeah. and grandpa would give you a milk jug and he'd say catch every every grasshopper you can get your hands on <laughs> and that's what you'd go fishing with yep. know, grasshoppers yep. and crickets yeah yep. yep. that was fun We'll have to do a home and home one year yeah. where we'll go up there. You guys come down here. We'll go spearing. Yeah, that'd go. be fun. <coughs> I don't know where, where we'd go. There's some decent decent lakes around here. There's not there's not one that's going to be, like, a good chance at a huge one. Mm -hmm. Like, Green Lake is, uh, is a good-sized lake. Yeah. It has big fish in it. Hmm. Swan Lake. My favorite. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it might. It, there's a good chance it's not going to make it this year, but uh, yeah, water's down so much. Water's so low. I was bullshit. And I said uh, we could uh, probably don't need a rope on our spear this year. Yeah. <laughs> hang on yeah. to it. So. Yeah. It's only about. Uh, it levels out at about eight or nine feet deep. It's mm -hmm. the deepest spot, and it comes out. Uh, Games Lake uh, drains into it. Games Lake. Drains into this one, and this one drains into Henshin. Henshin drains into Lake Andrew. Lake Andrew is right around. Get, that's you know, Games Lake and Lake Andrew are big lakes. And Sibley State mm -hmm. Parks on bigger the lakes. on the one yeah. is bigger, but these are these are natural environment lakes, and uh, they got cattails around, which is my favorite one because there ain't you don't have no water skiers out there. Yeah. Or anything. Yeah. Yeah. 
wet jets buzzing around, sound like a mosquito and, yep. uh, and, and things like that. So, um, and it's got a lot of, uh, <coughs> still got a lot of fish in it. And, and, you know, you could, when we used to duck hunt a little bit, uh, the boys used to duck hunt a little bit out there and, and, uh, oh, they just had a lot of fun on that lake. So, yeah. Uh, but when that water does not run out of games <laughs> into it, that's what I was going to say. Like as long aeration. as you have it, have a running in there, it, it should be okay. But it, it shuts if off. If it doesn't, yeah. And it, right now, the game lake is so low that it doesn't. That water doesn't run. If the water don't run, uh, and it didn't last it was two yeah, years ago. It was last year. Didn't run either. But it was. It was. Yeah. Uh, we had really clear ice, yeah. and and you didn't have the dead ice, so that it, it lived. I thought it was going to be toast last year, but it made it. No. But the odds of it, you know, you can't Just Russian out. roulette, basically. Yeah. Try to get an air aid yeah, out there, maybe, or something. Yeah, we <coughs> looked in. <laughs> yeah, the, the DNR is not real helpful with that, I found out, because we were trying to get our lake aerators a couple of years ago and ended up at the Lake Association had to get one. And yeah, they don't. Pay a guy to plug it in, you know. I don't know. Dad and the neighbors might. <laughs> yeah. the you sell a couple well, spears. Right? The, the, the I'm the only I'm guy wondering lives. about like insurance and stuff like right. that. Like if yeah. you get there's a there's a decent amount of traffic. Creeds not a, not a, thin ice and yeah. No. Yeah, it's and it's. I think there's permits involved and stuff. Like it stinks because it's it's been pretty. It slowed down a little bit, but it was really good three years ago, and you know, uh, and by really good, you know. A lot of 28 to 33, mm-hmm. like a lot. Yeah. Well, those uh, are nice. That's, fish. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I For love eating, that. you can't get any better now. Yeah. You're not, like, the biggest one I've ever taken out of there is 35. I know that, I know there's been, I, there's 40s somewhere mm-hmm. swimming through, you know, they're, they're going. But mm-hmm. the thing last year was the first time I've ever seen walleyes like that. I used to maybe see a walleye a year, if that. And last year I saw just as many walleye as pike. And wow. it's and now it's gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> it's like great. Dang it. Oh. Well, I'd just like to thank you guys for coming on. Um yeah, I, I think out. there's gonna this be a, so much a, fun, a yeah. lot of interest with this one. So um you know, your name comes up quite a bit in all the circles I'm in, so Thank you, people tune in, and um, just okay. thank you for letting us come out here. Your, yeah. your hunting shack, this Fun. is this is amazing. And uh, I wish I could. Uh, I wish uh, <coughs> it was a little warmer, and uh, we could take you guys for a four wheeler ride yeah. and show you where. Yeah. You know, this is some my bad, fab- fabulous hunting it. land. <laughs> we got this is I envision heaven looking. <laughs> like, I know, you right? know? Right. right? Turn around. Yeah, we got redneck wow. deer stands uh, out here, so uh, we got awesome. four of them on here. I'm never sitting in a tree again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you get my age, you don't want to. It's be like a dark over. house in the, in the on stilts, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. We always we would always do muzzle. I grew up like muzzle odor was what I did. Didn't do slug. Yeah. And then finally, I like, I don't know. I decided to think for myself, and <laughs> uh, I'm like, wait. So we're gonna we're gonna hunt when it's older yeah <laughs> and they're smarter yeah <laughs> i'm gonna try the other season yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now i you just do both yeah. like why not yeah. uh yeah. and especially in a if you're in a blind oh, it's like man, yeah. yeah it doesn't matter what the weather's like i just i hunted down in iowa this last week and the monday when it was super super cold we had a box blind set up and i crawled up in there and <laughs> you <laughs> start to yeah. mr buddy and you're like ain't so bad <laughs> <laughs> well, that's we were out during slug and it was just pissing rain and it was it was a nasty day and he texted me think we'd be out in a stand like this <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. No. No. you just sit there and you kind of like oh, yeah. nice rainy day <laughs> we got it pretty good all right hey, um, little falls is gonna go yeah first saturday in march good mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and if you stay on top of the National Fish Decoy Association page, we'll be updating that and, and letting, uh, you know, promoting those shows and things like that. Okay. You'll be there. You'll be there? I said you'll be there. Uh, yeah. Little <laughs> fall, we'll, we'll for sure be at Alexandria again. We'll for sure be at Perm. Okay. Um, little fall, he... The trouble is, it's, it's 
You get two weeks between. Right between. Yeah. And, and, <coughs> and it sounds like we're bragging, but I ain't, I, it, we won't have anything left after Little Falls. Well, so we got to build everything for, you know, in two weeks. And, and so it gets to be, you know, you guys don't make a decoy overnight either. You know what it's like. So what's the, what's the start to finish, say, what, how much time do you have invested in one spear, do you figure? Well, a <laughs> couple days yeah. in each one. Um, I mean, it's it's a it's a trick question because I we make a lot of parts um, ahead of time, you know, and say uh, like we make our wishbones. I roll that piece, ten foot piece. I roll it, yeah. and then and then we just cut out chunks. And I got a whole pail full. Just grab a couple and, or whatever, you know. Okay. So I mean, if I had to do everything from scratch, it would you could spend two days and then get before you know, and you clear all of them at one time, you know, maybe. Like just last time we did, we did eight of them. Well, I was just thinking about that because, so the the selling all of them thing is kind of a recent phenomenon. Like we used to go to shows and we we do all right, sell yeah. you know a few. But uh, ever since kind of COVID and we didn't take orders for a year, uh, we went to a gun show <laughs> in Sock Center and sold everything really fast. One hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to Alexandria, and if you were going to start, if it would have actually started when they said it was going to start, we would have been sold out in 15 minutes, but uh, it was more like, it was about an hour. Um, and that's just, but that, I think everybody I've talked to that is involved in decoys uh, <coughs> and spears has had record years. Yeah, I've seen the same thing. Yeah, it's like, if... If, the, if you have decoys, they sell. And yeah. same thing with spears. It's, it's been a kind of a good thing with, you know, obviously, like you said, social media. It's like that's yeah, that's bringing a lot of people to these shows that, you know, weren't normally coming. Well, in that, that gun show, that's the only reason we sold that. We hadn't been selling <laughs> selling them, taking orders for a year. And I'm like, hey, we're going to be in Sock Center at a gun show. And people wanted, they just, they want to get spears. And, uh, and it, it's really cool too well it's and you don't have power to facebook you know <laughs> that's that's the way it goes it's facebook but but you we didn't we we did really well but we didn't we came back with a couple um the two five times didn't sell as the first ones to go generally i couldn't believe that yeah and i was i made those <laughs> 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 hey those are two off your order list maybe or yeah like no that. that's what happens that's what i was hoping for is bring a few decoys back to fill some christmas orders and yeah you, and had a, you were clean you right out <laughs> yeah. didn't they yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but we to go back to the the clearing thing so with the last three times we have cleared was before the alex show we just cleared everything that we brought there and then before the bijou show um and then and then just yesterday we got rid of three three spears yesterday and a fourth and then those other ones that were in the shop those are all they're made for someone mm -hmm. but so 13 13 spears we cleared the one 14 and it takes time to build up that yeah. many like we'll we'll still clear with like five spears you know but yeah. just because i have your spear built doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be ready to go right. in a week yeah. or no. tomorrow yeah. no. just because it's it's a lot of work to do the the cleanup i guess he he does the clearing uh we use cerakote and i guess it's the cleanup that takes the most time uh, but it's nice you don't want to just take everything out for one spear all right guys well thanks a lot and yeah, this was man, enjoyable this was very yeah. enjoyable so my son just texted me he says uh i'm pretty sure i just hit one uh, all right oh, oh, awesome uh, we couldn't hear it he said a one for two tonight no, <laughs> <laughs> he shot the, of course he, he's only 50 50. Yeah. So. <laughs> all right guys we'll thanks. see you at the next show probably yes you will all awesome. right awesome. thank you thanks yeah. Are throwing that? That's yeah. where I'm going. I'm yeah. too crazy. Cool. See you guys tonight, then. We're going.